Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 Show. Today is September 21st and we're doing business and social news. Not news, links. I don't know if we've ever gotten all three. No, we all, <laughs> one of us messes it up, and usually me. <laughs> and this week's news is brought to you by us. All the level 1 KVMs are in stock on the store, except for a couple that'll be in stock in a couple of weeks. But you should just order what we have now. Is it not also <laughs> brought, to you, brought to them by uh, Linode? Yes, yeah, Lenovo. <laughs> yeah, we do have a sponsor. Let's not well, take their glory. <laughs> yeah. There's a Linode link below. You should check out Linode for doing all of your own self-hosting. Every week, it's like there's another story, and I think hmm, I should definitely plug Linode because you can self-host your stuff and not worry about this cloud nonsense. They do consistently help us out with these videos, so check them out. Well... Linode, I hope, is doing well, but based on how all the other companies are doing, I fear they might be having a bit of a downturn. Yes. Because uh, it is universal, and it's interesting to see what gets cut first. Google cancels half the projects at its internal R&D group, Area 120. It didn't fire everybody, but it just said, hey, we're going to rein this in. And that kind of makes sense, given that Android has kind of become a stagnant dumpster fire. I think Google's literally forgotten how to use technology because everybody uses technology so differently and they think, oh, I'm a snowflake and the way that I use it is different than everybody else uses it. It's just, it's, it is, it's so broken. I feel like their products have just gotten worse and worse in the UI department. Like every time they make an update, it's like, wow, this is less intuitive than what it used to be. It sounds like you almost accidentally stumbled into critiquing woke hiring. <laughs> That's not allowed. <laughs> not at all. And uh, we uh, talked about last week that Google was appealing a very, very large fine coming out of the EU. Unfortunately, in rapid succession, that was denied. Google loses appeal against its record $4 billion EU fine. And remember from the episode earlier this week, there's a $25 billion fine coming up. That's big numbers. Yeah. Even if you're Google. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Well... I have a lot of thoughts on this one. If you've purchased a Pentium this year, <laughs> treasure it because it will be one of the last. <laughs> Intel processors will replace Pentium and Celeron in 2023 laptops. The Verge has an article. Verge redesign. Krista likes it. I like the articles, but I looked at the category pages the other day and like the category pages are dark mode, but the articles aren't, which is strange. Oh, oh let's take a look at one. Ew. Yeah. And then oh, there's like they're... this weird gradient thing. Look at that. Oh, I thought they were colored, but they're not. They're all purple. They're all purple. Yeah, it, it's odd. The verge purple. The the typography work is nice, but like I don't understand what they were doing between the articles and the actual content. They, they went out on a limb with that redesign, and I think the limb just broke. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, for the specifically the purple parts and the minimalism, I'm thinking uh, of a German that's wearing a black turtleneck that's explaining to me how we're ripping everything down to just the absolute bare essentials it's a swiss style a lot of web is inspired by swiss style because of the the grids and everything that's fine i just don't think this was super effective because it kind of blinds you when you go from a now, list page to an article with now we dance maybe maybe obfuscation is the goal which i think is what intel is trying to do oh yeah yeah so this anyway. article they're, they're abandoning pentium and celeron why would you abandon Pentium? Pentium has been a brand since the 486. So but the 40... you make it sound like they're going to stop making Pentiums. Well, I mean, they're going to stop calling it the Pentium. Yeah, but they're still going to be making the same you <laughs> know, low-end chips. That, that's the thing that I want to talk about. It's like you're Intel. We're in, a, in an age of trillion-dollar companies. And Intel is telling its shareholders, we have done such a bad job selling low-end chips called Celeron and Pentium that has become a dirty word. Nobody wants a Pentium. Nobody wants a Celeron. And you think about it, it's like that tablet, you know, that laptop, we've all bought a parent or, you know, a friend or just somebody in need, a system that was based on a Celeron or a Pentium. And it was a garbage tier experience compared to any other solution where the processor didn't matter. You know, an Android-based tablet, an iPad, whatever in that same price class and that was a much better user experience than a, an anemic x86 processor right i mean that's why that the brand is tarnished isn't it yeah well i've had a lot of people email me and they're like hey i'm gonna buy this laptop is this a good laptop and it's a pentium 
And I always say, no, don't buy a Pentium laptop. And I'll send them a link. It's like, this one costs more, but get this one instead. It's I not, think that's what they're trying to avoid. It's not just that it's a Pentium laptop. It's that they shoved five-year-old technology in along with the Pentium laptop. The Pentium in its own right might not have been a terrible technology, but there were Pentium laptops shipping with mechanical hard drives in like... Well, why would you spec a great laptop and then put a Pentium in it? <laughs> that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. It's just... It's like, well, now it's just going to be Intel processor. Uh, but I Which think, also is Celeron now. Yeah, I think that's going to end up making it worse. So, like, the thing that's happening with Celeron and Pentium to make it bad hasn't been corrected for the brand at large. So maybe you should come up with a new brand that's just, that's just called, you know, Intel Poor people or Intel something. Intel Basics. <laughs> yeah, Intel Basics. Yeah. That, that actually wouldn't... <laughs> Intel Basics actually is a good idea because... Yeah, it's just they've they've screwed up so badly. The Celeron used to not be terrible. It's like I can get a Celeron and I will be I will get reasonable performance, but it's going to have some limitations. It's not that anymore. Intel hasn't, minus hasn't been that in a long time. And we are still in the block of bad news for companies. <laughs> Twilio to lay off eleven percent of its workforce. This is a communications platform because we all need to communicate because we all work from home. I read this is 1%, but 11 is much worse. 11 is a lot more. Now, this gentleman, uh, I think this is the guy who said he was going to do this based on, like, wokeness and stuff, right? I don't know. I think uh, it's not in this article. Obviously, CNBC is not going to talk about that. I'm pretty sure this is the company where he was like, we're going to follow guidelines of uh inclusivity and race during these layoffs which i took to mean we're going to be racist with these layoffs yeah. <laughs> it's not performance based it's just randomly distributed based on your genetic makeup okay kind of like how the the white house does hiring hmm. and john deere uh a very maligned company and for good reason because they make something that we desperately need but then they try to control it after you buy it forever and they try to control you and they're getting better at it software fees to make up 10 percent of john deere's revenue by 2030 up to 10 percent of john deere's revenues by 2030. so here's what i want to do i want to go back to all the, the tractor designs where the patents have expired i want to found a new company that just makes expired patented tractor designs and that's just all it is you can't because a big part of the way that they crowbar this in is emissions that sounds like not very free. This is the land of the free. Isn't Are it? you insinuating <laughs> that they're using climate policies to control the market? Because you cannot suggest that. If John Deere's really excited about climate control, I don't think that their intentions are pure. How dare you? <laughs> I think the other, like, at least probably 50% of their profitability is just like hats and t-shirts and toys. Because <laughs> yeah. like a lot, I know, I see a lot of people with like John Deere it's this year but they're not farmers and i'm like you don't yeah. even drive, have a tractor you lot, don't have a farm like look at all the people who have harley davidson gear who don't drive harley davidson motorcycles uh -huh. i to me when i see that that lowers my opinion of a person immediately why are you advertising Sing for them yes. for a monster so, you know why they're doing it because they're like, like i'm country i want everybody to know that i'm a good old boy and no you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which yeah. Uh. <laughs> so there's John Deere kind of fraud, which is acceptable according to the government and the powers that be. But then there's just straight up in your face fraud. Nikola, you remember the electric truck company? The Nikola founder lied to investors about tech, the prosecutor says, in fraud trial. So this trial, we've covered this in the past, but there was a video of the truck basically just coasting downhill, but the way that they shot it, they made it look like, like it, it was, was flat. Driving. Yeah. And driving with, with uh, you know, some gusto, uh, no, it was all faked. So Now, Nikola lost that lawsuit. The company lost the lawsuit. They had to pay a pretty big number, right? Ooh, yeah. uh, Reuters, paywall. Reuters Paywall. And, you know, as you, I've said this many times before, but pro tip, Reuters Paywall is just JavaScript. Just turn off JavaScript. But I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, I think it was like $125 million. This lawsuit is against this dude in particular. Yeah. And they're saying his his response was like, well, in a car commercial, everybody lies in car commercials, right? Like when they're sliding around in those salt flats and like, that's not real. And they said, uh, you went on podcasts. 
and you told people to invest in this. Yeah. <laughs> it's also true that uh, in a lot of car commercials, the car isn't real. It's just CGI. There's a generic CGI car, or there's a generic car that can alter its wheelbase and tire size, and it's just a frame, and then they just CG put the car on the frame. There's a whole company that, that is dedicated that. to that kind of thing. Yeah, but I think even with that, if the Ford CEO went on Joe Rogan's podcast and said, oh, yeah, we got a car that's going to run on water. You should invest now. And people invested. He he would get a similar treatment. Yeah, right? and at the end of the day, other cars, like, they do still drive. Like, you could drive <laughs> them around a parking lot like that. <laughs> they have motors. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Nikola did not have a motor, in fact. That was their, their Achilles heel. Or a, or a battery. They had everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Didn't they buy all that up from other people, though? Yeah. I don't think they developed any of yeah. that. Like, when you say they had it, they had it in the same sense that I could have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, SSDs versus hard disks, are they actually more reliable? There's There's been some debate about that. We have one data center who has been meticulously keeping track of that. Thank for, you, Backblaze. Yeah, Backblaze is really, they should get points for this. Five years of data show that SSDs are more reliable than HDDs over the long haul. Finally, all that anecdotal data has some really hard oh, wow. numbers with a large volume. So at year five, your mechanical hard drive is basically, you know, from four to seven percent. I mean, that's not terrible. You could have a, an eight-year-old hard drive, but I don't know. I've always said that you can, you know, mechanical hard drive is designed to last five years, and it sure does look that way. And plus, this is in a data center, so you know that they're getting yeah. a workout, so... Good job. Every headline I read about this, the like my mind just like, you know, obsessively just keeps saying over and over, Figma balls. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop it. I can't stop my head from saying that. Adobe snaps up Figma for twenty billion, taking out one of its biggest rivals in digital design. We've literally just been talking about Figma here at our office. Uh, yeah. I don't use it myself, but I know some people who do, and Adobe's like, let me ruin that for you. <laughs> Yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a man crying because you know it's going to be ruined. That was the guy that cried when he was laying off his people. Uh, I mean, not related to this. Yeah, but, someone's yeah. using the image, yeah. So, yeah, that was basically their only competitor in a lot of these uh, market areas. And they're pulling the old meta playbook here, which, considering what we just... Like with T-Mobile, for example. Yeah. What we just went through with T-Mobile... Surely to God, somebody's going to be looking at this. Uh, They're all no. asleep at the wheel. They don't care. This this also shows, uh, time and time again, these old guard companies can't figure out online collaboration software. Because like Microsoft Office, they're like, we're going to take Office online and you'll collaborate. Then they ended up buying a company uh, to deal with that. Photoshop, they're never going to figure out how to do collaborative Photoshop. Collaborative, any, like Adobe is just bad at it. And like Adobe XD... Oh my gosh. That's the worst piece of software. Really, I'm sorry for someone who uses it, it but really I hate is it. There, there are so many people in the industry that are like, oh, Adobe is a leader. We should use XD because Adobe gives us that software. No, it's trash. It's uh, bad. Adobe has some good products, but like XD is so unintuitive and terrible to use. Yeah. Well, look forward for, to all of Figma's products also being Becoming unintuitive, unintuitive and terrible to use, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there's a, there's a deeper problem, though, or deeper... Uh, dark cloud on the horizon which is as more and more software becomes as collaborative as figma figma is basically unusable you have to be online you can't not mm. be online that's great for adobe's bottom line see also the creative cloud but i think that's bad for the future of software there's no way to use it offline so uh, that's bad for creativity too because yeah. sometimes you have to be online or like unplugged to get into that kind of headspace and then do you know what it's nope. really good for though subscriptions yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, somebody's got a new Starlink subscription and they've got it in a place they could never get it before. Have you guys ever thought about, uh, I don't know if you have to be uh, in some sort of like scientific studies to do this. If you just, if you just volunteered, they'd probably take you just do menial labor. The winter over at the research stations. So there's a six or eight month period where planes cannot get in and out. <laughs> right. And you can go and live there during that time. Yeah, I, I've read people descriptions of from people that have stayed there during that. And as I was reading their descriptions, I was thinking The Shining. <laughs> or The Thing, which <laughs> is the literal. Th it's not a dog! <laughs> but here, let me, let me make that hell a little bit more real for you, right? A thousand people 
living and working in this really small area, all sharing 17 megabits per second. Uh, SpaceX Starlink arrives in Antarctica, now available on all seven continents. And they've got a picture of the constellation there. Look at that. Uh, another engagement challenge. Does Starlink have its uh, satellite to satellite communications network up and running? Because in some of these places in the world, it might actually be more low latency than a terrestrial connection. Because yeah. if it can hop from satellite to satellite to satellite. That's what they're doing there. The lasers. Yeah, I mean, like generally available. Or is that something they did specifically for Antarctica? I think they might be testing it there. But that is the idea for the one that also goes to the mobile phones. Yeah, yeah the, the laser to laser. And then we'll become dependent on it, and China will disrupt it. <laughs> we are absolutely going to become dependent on it. It's going to be really good, too, when, like, the satellite is probably going to start doing analysis of your traffic. So, like, if you're, if you're you know, if you're on the East Coast in the U.S., and your traffic is bound for the East Coast, it'll probably go up to a satellite and then go to a ground station on the East Coast. But if you need to go to West Coast, instead of going to a ground station on the West Coast, it'll probably go up and across and down to a ground station on the West Coast. And that'll probably improve latency again. They're probably working on that, but it probably doesn't do that right now. That's Google's thing. Yeah. Google was working on, like, they're not adding thing, any new thing. They're still going to use satellites and ground stuff, but their thing is the smart routing. Yeah. They were doing, I saw the paper on that where they were doing the math for that, but I didn't think they actually had the hardware for it. Maybe they'll use... Mr. Musk. <laughs> oh, another merger. Uh, Google <laughs> buying SpaceX. Actually, he, would, he wouldn't sell it. <laughs> no way. Too much vanity there, right? <laughs> well, the uh, New York Times this is, is so uh, tone deaf. Yeah, they have they have made an error. They have judged poorly. New York Times is giving out branded lunch boxes to get people back in the office, but over thirteen hundred staff are <laughs> refusing to budge. I wonder why. Well, ah, uh, fortune. They actually said why. And they said, hey, I'm saving tons of fuel money. I'm saving buying lunch every day to put in your stupid box. And I'm saving, you know, like all the other city costs, parking and so forth. So rather than this dumb lunch box, why don't you pay me more to make up for that? Because I'm doing my same job, but I'm doing it without all those costs. I don't think they had a response for that necessarily. Mm -hmm. We just, we really want you to be in the building. Why? I wonder if this is going to lead to social change where we see something like, you know, an employer allows you to expense your costs for going to work as a thing rather than give somebody a raise because nobody ever wants to give anybody a raise. It's a, okay, well, give us your fuel costs and your parking costs and your blah, 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 and we'll pay that. And then maybe they can write it off their taxes. Are they going to pay me for a wildly fuel inefficient car? <laughs> They're probably going to punish me for that. I yeah. mean, maybe. It's the New York but, Times. But if they really want you back in the office. I think that's the problem, right? I mean, it's so replaceable these days. Name a New York Times reporter who's a star. <laughs> Name a New York Times Kyle reporter. Kyle Wiggers. Wiggers doesn't work for the New York Times. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> he's well on his way. I think he's he's one of the tech websites. Maybe yeah. ZD or CNET he, or something like he that. He posts a lot. Like, he is yeah. a prolific writer. I see his name everywhere. Yeah, he's the man. Well, uh, you know, we got the big tech surveillance. And as much as Apple wants to revolutionize that, we've now learned that they did that so that they could just do their own version of it uh. and put everybody else out of business. You're not going to be saved from it. But some of the smaller companies claim that they want to join together and help. DuckDuckGo, Proton, and Mozilla throw their weight behind a bill targeting big tech quote unquote surveillance this is ad tech this is the ad tech stuff that we're always talking about and then i don't know if this article does it but one of the write-ups for this also talks about the cohort thing and how the cohort thing plays in with this but this is the first salvo which is the right to be forgotten i think they're going to hit a lot of resistance yes oh yeah this is a it's a nice gesture but whether it will actually do anything and this isn't really a tech story, but it is interesting. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm it's feeling interesting it. Interesting what they're doing here. I wonder, you know, I'm trying, I've always wanted to like think about like, okay, what are they trying to get over on us here? I wonder if maybe he had a little bit of a, you know, like, oh, hey, let's look at the internal metrics here. This company is not doing well. We're going to start losing a ton of money because we have retail locations and that's dying. What can we do? And he was like, why don't we just wash our hands of it? <laughs> Patagonia founder gives company away and future profits are aimed to help fight climate crisis. 
Well, so it was voting and non-voting stock, giving away the company. He really did give away the company, but he didn't give away control of the company. Well, I don't think that's the point here. The point is they're going to reinvest as much as they need and then all profit would spill over. It's basically a trust. So. They also do a lot of stuff with uh, like fair trade. Most of their clothing is fair trade. Are you a Patagonia cool. fan? That's like camping. Patagucci type stuff. is sometimes what they call it because their clothing is expensive. But mm. yeah, yeah, I like a lot of their clothes. They are expensive for what they are. But would it be better just to lower costs? What do you mean, like lower the cost of the clothing? Rather than give money to companies that are you know organizations that are probably just going to steal it, like they're not going to do anything good with it. Why not just pass that along to the consumer? Just make your products cheaper. Well, if you don't they, want profit, because they most of their clothing is fair trade made, which means that they pay higher rates than other companies do for clothing. But they're making profit. Yeah. So, but if, probably not as much as you might think. But they don't want to make profit. That's my point. Uh, I think it's a PR stunt. It is probably a PR stunt. I do agree with that. This is a what a saga. How long have we been talking about the flurry machines? Yeah. The McDonald's ice cream machines. So they're always broken. And they're always broken broken for a good reason. They are terrible. And they were built almost to break, I think, on purpose, to yeah. be serviced over and over. And so someone solved it and it kicked off a huge firestorm. Judge allows McFlurry machine repair lawsuit to proceed. The it's funny. It was a fairly simple repair too, right? Like it well, wasn't so much a repair, it's another piece of hardware that monitors it. Yeah. And uh, helps you bypass all of the restrictive controls mm -hmm. that they have. Um, the judge didn't say that it, that this is this is like a pretrial thing, but the judge agreed with um, the company, the small company that makes the thing to do the diagnostic thing, because the larger company that McDonald's is working with was trying to say that it causes bodily harm and can cause your shake machine to come to life and start eating customers and things like that. <laughs> well, it was, you know, exactly. The judge agreed with all that. But the judge said that didn't that didn't necessarily rise to the level of like torturous business interference and deliberate awfulness. Although it may ultimately be proven in court. So this has to do with an injunction because they were both sort of fighting tooth and nail because there's a lot of franchisee money on the line here. And uh, this is, I really like stepping back for a second. I like looking at this case because if you're a consumer and you're thinking, oh, I can trust large companies because large companies want to do the right thing for their customers. In this case, the customer is the franchisee that owns McDonald's. And even those people are getting the shaft because the company is so large and indifferent and uncaring that even McDonald's doesn't look at this and say, wow, our franchisees are being horribly abused by our corporate machinery. We should do something about it. We're losing money because yeah. they're not selling uh, McFlurries or whatever. It's more mm -hmm. like, oh, let's all suffer. So this, this case is a great microcosm of the thing that we need to work on as a society because it's a mess. But McDonald's could also step in and be like, hey, we're changing how flurries are made. Yeah, but they haven't, which tells you a lot. Nor will they. Yeah. Well, we got the central bank digital currencies coming. That's a, a darkness on the horizon. I think that's really going to change things for the worst. But what it will do is invalidate the existing system. <laughs> so if you're the existing system, you got to be sweating it a little bit, huh? What do you do? Swift and Symbuoyant <laughs> announce a corporate data blockchain pilot. So Swift is the network that processes bank transactions like checks and wire transfer. Well, is it, does it include wire transfers? It's definitely checks. It's anything bank to bank, right? Bank, I think yeah. wire transfer would definitely be part of it. Um, they're going to do blockchain to keep track of everything. Just make it run a little smoother. It's not crypto blockchain. It's just blockchain transactional for security. So it'll be interesting. Because if we're using CBDCs on a standardized chain, Swift would have no value anymore. Yeah. There's no reason for it. The, the trusted network is cryptographically enforced, which is better than where we are now with Swift. Oh, don't say that to them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they disagree. <laughs> They'll dispatch the squad. Take me out. <laughs> Uh, I, this is not that interesting, but it is interesting that they've kind of let this languish for so long. Mm. I wonder how many of these they sell. Amazon releases upgraded Kindle and Kindle Kids devices for the first time in three years. Didn't didn't Barnes and Noble have one called like the Nook or something, mm. and then that one got canceled. I wonder why there there's no reason for them to be innovating in this space now. 
I think the reason they keep them going is because they make enough because you're it's you're stuck with Amazon's ecosystem there, right? Mm, I don't yeah. think you can import uh, non DRM books, so you're going to buy from Amazon, and there's a huge margin for eBooks. I mean, Jesus, they can uh, they could probably sell the hardware for a loss, still make money. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's maybe that's the main reason. And then they're going to break their old devices. I think engagement challenge. What uh, third party options are there short of jailbreaking the device? I read somewhere you could load PDFs on them, like the PDF eBooks, but it was a huge convoluted process. Yeah, but that's going to be like, how's a PDF reader going to perform on that crap yeah. hardware? Yeah, that was part of the problem. Yeah. So the cool thing about the only feature I saw that I liked about those was a six week runtime, I think, mm -hmm. per charge. Oh, wow. Low power for sure. I really can't wait for the a good DIY e ink device. I've, I've been really tempted to order the one that's not super thick. Um, that's a DIY, but it's a DRM free, and it's like a big eight by ten sheet of e ink, and it's fast. Uh, at this point, I feel like we got so many tablets that you know you, you can just get just an app. Matter. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, this is a poor sort. I did. I, I'm kind of lazy with the sort this week. Like, well, like Wendell mentioned, we had a little bit of a crisis right before we recorded. So, uh, anyway, this should have gone with the Swift story. Perhaps this is a better alternative to Swift because the great thing about this, interoperability. They aim for this to be universal. Linux Foundation announces the Open Wallet Foundation to develop interoperable digital wallets. What do you need to transfer your smart chip in your credit card, because it's got a chip, into your wallet? You can't just copy a credit card number anymore. What do you do? And also the near field. It's like, how does your phone learn the near field thing from your credit card. Obviously, Apple has gotten into the driver's license game. They're in the payment game and blah, blah, blah. But all those wallets are custom to the provider <laughs> and the, or I mean, not the provider, but the, the company that sold you the device. So this is supposedly going to be open. Remind me again how Apple Green Bubbles is going to uh, <laughs> do an interoperability standard for payments. They can't even get it right for messaging. <laughs> No, they just won't. buy your grandma an iPhone. What they'll do is they'll partner with Best Buy to make sure they don't use that other payment. Mm. <laughs> I can't wait to go to the local grocery store and it's all just eye checkout and there's one lane at the end. It's always broken. Yeah. yeah. There's keys missing. <laughs> Dirty doctors in it. It's an old lady trying to use a check. Is this our dark future? Can we can we stop it somehow? <laughs> She's just rubbing the check against the, the screen. screen. Like, yeah. I don't understand this world. <laughs> Well, uh, full self-driving. Now, when what year were we promised full self-driving? Was that 2017? That sounds I, right. Yeah. 2018, maybe? What year is it now? It's like 2022, probably. It's, it's been a couple. Been a little less than five. So where is it? I'm not the only one asking. Tesla is sued by drivers over alleged false autopilot and full self-driving claims. This is uh, on the heels of the increase in cost of full self-driving but no doubt spurred because the full self-driving team was basically all laid off. We covered that story, what, like three, four weeks ago? Mm -hmm. And the the improvement, we had the one big update and remember all those videos of people who convinced it to do horrifically dangerous things? <laughs> yeah. So that- I like the model children that were punted 20 feet in mm -hmm. the air. <laughs> and nothing since then. So these guys are arguing, hey, you promised it, it never happened, and now it doesn't even seem like you're trying, so. Hard to argue with that. And yet I'm sure that Tesla will. It's funny, they're not asking for damages. Oh, Reuters paywall. But so the outcome, if they win, could be uh, they have to pay back customers or they could lose their license. Mm. Yeah. Some hot news. And uh, <clears throat> you know what happened? So I woke up this morning and the, the sun had still risen. There was no black hole lurking above my home. That you know of. So apparently nothing bad happened during the merge. <laughs> There's some inertia with those used graphics cards. Ether falls after Smart Contracts Network completes its long-anticipated merge. And the merge is going to release the GPUs. Most people that were doing GPU mining were probably mining Ethereum. And now there's no reason to. So expect millions of graphics cards to flood the used market. Uh, you know <laughs> probably, what? you know, lightly used, right? I bet next time you go through the KFC drive-through over by the dumpster, it'd just be graphics cards laying everywhere. 
<laughs> the cats that live near the KFC dumpster are going to yeah. be so disappointed. About All it. the stray animals are going to be moved out, and then graphics cards are going to take over their territory. I mean, I, I know there's a next generation of graphics cards waiting in the wings, but if it's like 30, 80s, five for a thousand dollars, it's like, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Sign me up. They're insane for yeah. bringing out the four series at this point. That's. <laughs> Uh, it, see, it's it, you can't just delay the fab, though. You can't go to the, the people making your chips and say, hey, can we do this like in six months or a year? The answer is no. <laughs> well, that's good for the consumer. Yeah. Start saving now for your Christmas video card because <laughs> you should be able to get quite a deal. I think, uh, you know, based on some of our other stories and stuff that I've been hearing, not just with the strikes in the supply chain, it seems like the supply chain could break down again this holiday season because everything has basically stopped economically for the last couple of months and now things are starting to pick up again because holiday season and because other things but the supply chain could break down again but we also have that metric of the insane i don't remember what the percentage was but it was scary of people who are already tapped out on credit yeah. and still living on credit there's also like the railway strikes and stuff that's going I think on too. we resolved that did we was well, that early this week it's it's now smoldering Okay. You know what was terrifying about that is the Republican uh, attempt to force the people to take the deal. How yeah. is that legal? Yeah. And yet. <laughs> Old Bernie stopped it. <laughs> if the rails shut down, people might kill him. <laughs> well, uh, well, I we, think it's good, though, that he did that. Now, I disagree with the whole idea that the government could force us to do things. But once we stop getting food and items. Yeah. <laughs> food and items required for life yeah well listen all the government has to do to solve the problem here is write a check i mean they've been doing that left and right like crazy what do you think this is ukraine <laughs> i saw somebody uh, it was a, a comment on something that said all that ukraine aid is loans is that how you understand that there are some of it there is some of it there's billions of dollars that is loans how will they be able to pay that back but that's the thing that's the reason did you see the thing about uh at one point back earlier this year, there was a point where everybody was almost at the table, even Putin. And Boris Johnson flew in there and was like, no, 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 there'll be no peace. Because if Russia wins and takes territory and there's a different government in Ukraine, they'll cancel those loans. Yeah. They'll never pay them. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, nervous laughter. we've had so many back and forths in this war. Yeah. It's, it's like a tennis match. Like you never know what to believe. <laughs> Seems like they're winning again, but uh, engagement challenge. What do you think about that? Oh, good grief. Anyway, uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about social media. I love this. This is you should. Everybody should go watch his testimony. It's only two hours, but my God. So on Tuesday, we did a live stream, and this had just come out. We kind of mentioned it, but I didn't want to put it in there because you have to wait to see what he actually said. And you know, like Wendell said, it was, uh, it was fireworks. <laughs> Twitter may have hired a Chinese spy. And four other key takeaways from the Senate hearing. This is on NPR, but this is just there's there's a lot of good technical details, and this is this is Mudge, uh, is known as Mudge, but is is that Co? Is that how you say his last name? I think so. Twitter was warned it hired a Chinese spy. Oops. He's, he's a security expert, but he's got technical chops, and ethically, as far as I can tell, you know, because I've followed him for like ten years, uh, he's uh, he's above reproach. Yeah, the the. Yeah, so it's like, hey, I think I figured out we hired a Chinese spy. The response from the executive team was, well, since we already have one, what does it matter if we have more? It's like, good mm. Lord. The State Department kind of wants to know those things. Do you think they would take that same approach to cancers in their body? <laughs> and uh, he blames it on, as he says, it's top down. It's not just people that, you know, in the weeds that don't know what they're doing. He says that uh, Agrawal is aware of it and causes it. Isn't that what... Uh, goat dude said here have a goat goat meal guy you mean uh Jack zuckerberg dorsey. was that dorsey i thought that was zuckerberg zuckerberg's the one that killed the goat oh it was when he and dorsey were having dinner yeah and dorsey was like this guy's insane yeah uh jack dorsey yeah. and uh he also said the same thing that we heard uh in the uh the testimony was that facebook that did that testimony or twitter it was facebook right mm -hmm. saying that they had no idea where that data went yeah <laughs> that why they were collecting it they collected it and then it went to the ad section, the advertising and section. And that was just like a black box. And they're like, we don't know what goes on over there. Seems like Twitter is saying the same thing because this guy says almost exactly the same. Yeah, Twitter can't con control the data it collects, as that co alleges. Because they don't know what they collect and where it's stored. And uh, 
Yeah. So the people who were who had started this questioning, they were like, well, what are the regulators doing about this? And the answer is nothing. It's like, well, for the, for the last, you know, very long time until the last couple of years, the FTC and the FCC were very ineffectual. So what did you expect to happen with regulation? Of course. The <laughs> ultimate troll must <laughs> tweets popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely helps his case. It, it, it very, very much helps Musk's case. But also, you know, I've done a lot of work for very large companies that I felt were dysfunctional. I feel a little bit better knowing that Twitter is this dysfunctional and not out of business. That's actually kind of impressive. But I don't feel better. I don't about feel that. good about that. Yeah. Because you know that we've worked on dysfunctional online shopping carts. And then I go to buy something online and I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Could other people be this dysfunctional? What are the odds? Uh, and if Mark Zuckerberg was not already one of the most unpopular men in the, the world of rich tech billionaires, he sure is now. Oh boy, are they going to be pissed at him. To defeat the FTC lawsuit, Meta demands 100 plus rivals share their biggest trade secrets. What a troll. Snap claims Meta wants to reconstruct virtually every decision Snap has made. The, the headline's a little bit sensational, but it's just saying, hey, the thing that you're accusing us of, FTC is how business is done at every company that does what we do. So get with the program. But he also wants those records. He wants trade secrets and everybody else. Yeah, when they say those are trade secrets, his response is, well, only the lawyers are going to look at it, not the engineers, which... Yeah, I'm sure I believe that. Yeah. And this, you know, this is, I put this in the social media section, just try to bounce the stories out, but this is perfectly along the line of Google's getting rid of the R&D department. And, uh, you know, everybody's getting rid of like the, the extra stuff. So what does Meta consider extra? Meta dissolves team responsible for discovering potential harms to society in its own products. We don't need that. No, that's a, that, you know, how could Facebook ever harm anybody? They're harmless. That would, you think that was an easy job or a hard job because it's easy to find examples but it might be exhausting to find all the examples i mean they have a whole team of people who are like suicidal just because they have to content moderate all the time that would be number one right yeah. oh here we, oh, we found one found one yeah easy <laughs> check mark oh the well I, I guess you can't blame them for the the tiktok car theft challenge can you no they don't own tiktok you know, the TikTok car theft challenge is not related to the encryption key problem. Really? When you start the car with that USB, it's just the shape of the USB. You can use something else as well. Good Lord. That's even worse. Yeah. I had no idea. Wow. Because I was... I don't know how, if I can say this. How does the security kit fix it then? Well, here, I was thinking, I was looking at who was doing these crimes. And I was saying to myself... There's no chance they were putting in, 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 injecting an encryption key mm. into this situation. Turns out, no, that's not how it works. That's a, another problem that they have. But this thing, you just rip the side off. There's no immobilizer. So as long as you can turn it, it'll start. Good Lord. That's messed up. I was watching one of those uh, police videos, and they were on the, like, he found the Kia boys getting at one, and they scattered away and ran. <laughs> And then the woman came out, and then two other women came out on the same street, and theirs had been stolen earlier in the week. Oh, wow. They had a support group. Uh, and if you've been using Twitter this week, and you said to yourself, it's a little sluggish, I wonder mm. what's going on. The answer is burning heat in California. Extreme California heat knocks key Twitter data center offline. This is a, a story that seems to be repeating itself a lot. Faster yeah. than expected. Well, they're having a tough time over there in California. So uh, it's not offline, but obviously if you're a company like Twitter, you want redundancy. So Twitter currently, until this thing comes back, which this was on the 12th, it might be back by now, uh, operating without redundancy. So if the, another data center goes down, Twitter goes down. Ooh. Where will everyone go to find out Twitter's down? I feel like whenever another website has a problem, it trends on Twitter immediately. It's like, oh, YouTube's down, or Reddit's down, or Facebook's down. The answer to your question is the first word of this headline. TikTok won't commit to stopping US data flows to China. 
they'll go to TikTok. Mm. And then their data will be sent to China. <laughs> well, he goes to Oracle right now, which is a U.S. company, and then to China. So during these questions, now we remember we had the report that uh, th there was an administrator user in the CCP who had like a dashboard login. TikTok says no, that is not the case. But when one of the lawmakers came out and they were like, will you pledge right now that you will never send data to China, they were unwilling to do so. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, it certainly makes sense, but it's bad. It's disturbing. <laughs> uh, I do not, you know, this is, this is the new speak. This is the world we live in where everything has to be sanitized and it's fake. It's not real because canola is an acronym. It stands for Canadian Lo oil low acid. Mm. There is no canola plant. <laughs> These plants are called something else and I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> Social media users looking for the perfect shot were put on notice by nervous farmers as canola crops broom. Canola bloom. crops. <laughs> that's not Canada. That's Australia. They are a gorgeous yellow color, you have to admit. It looks a little bit like our goldenrod that's in bloom right now here in Kentucky. It's our state flower. Not super useful ag ag uh, agriculturally speaking. No. Pollinators like it. The uh, You get it from the seeds, so obviously you have to... Uh, grow a lot of it so you get these massive yellow fields which is and uh you know people obviously just trample all over them to get their instagram photo look how much color grading this gal's doing yeah <laughs> well, so didn't you say so your dad's into photography and you said a few years ago your dad was like i don't see how people get such vibrant colors yeah. in their photos he didn't register that people i tried to editing them i tried to explain hdr to him and it was just one of those situations where he just turned out like okay we're not we're never going to have a conversation on that level again, huh? <laughs> uh, engagement challenge. Explain to them what it really is because we can't say. And emojis. I generally do not use emojis. You know what? I sent an email yesterday and I was like, ah, oh, God, this might sound a little snappy. It was. But I was like, I better soften it somehow. So I put a smiley in it. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Yeah. To, to make sure that it doesn't sound like I'm saying, give me what I need from you now. <laughs> and then I put a smiley face. So I guess I am responsible for some emojis. But uh, sir, I've never used eggplant. The eggplant emoji makes you less likable, according to new report. So if you've ever sent an email with the eggplant emoji, you're a bad person. I feel like if I got an email with an eggplant, I'd be like questioning how professional someone was being. <laughs> I think the rule for eggplant should be you only send the eggplant to a person who has voluntarily seen and touched what the eggplant represents. Mm. <laughs> that rule, I think, will help. Well, now you could get in trouble later on. Like if that person has told you they're no longer interested in eggplant, then you have to stop yeah. again. Now, here's an interesting one. Uh, people did not understand cowboy face and it occurred to me what is i mean it's just a cowboy person i don't i i assume it means like you're you're ready to go like i don't know maybe i could be very ignorant i love uh, i do love upside down face yeah now upside that down face good. i've always taken that to mean like this is crazy but what's like i don't know it's don't just know. crazy is that how you take that yeah yeah, yeah. and but what you're about kind of just commenting on the absurdity like, of whatever, whatever it is. sounds yeah. good what about cherries i certainly don't know the dual meaning of cherries i don't know that one either no. is that another another I, region i also wondered that because like the peach is like a butt mm, yeah uh, i understand peach yeah uh number one uh emoji for uh romance face blowing a kiss that makes sense, that makes sense. yeah Angry face, pile of poo, and eggplant, not popular. For negative, reasons. negative associations, yeah. Uh, I really like uh, just eyes, the big emoji eyes. I like that one. 76% of males reported using emoji during flirting as opposed to 68% of females. 27% of men ended a relationship with an emoji. Which one do you use for that? The I'm upside sad. down smiley face. <laughs> I'm breaking up with you, upside down smiley face. <laughs> uh, horrifying. What a world. Well, how much do we get for that one? Is there short ones this week? 44? Actually, 44 is pretty respectful. Yeah, yeah our, that's our, not bad at all. Story it was my Intel rant. Well, see you on Friday. Yep. More excitement. Bye. More links. Bye.